today we'll be going through the question on leak code called top k frequent element. This is a medium level question and it goes as follows. Um, given an integer array, so this is our input, an array of numbers, and an integer k, in this example we have two, return the k most frequent elements. Um, and we can return it in any order. So if we just look at this example right here, given our input of 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, what are the top two most frequent appearing element? Right? So look, just eyeballing it, 1 occurs three times, 2 occurs two times, and 3 occurs one time. So the top two most popular elements here would be 1 and 2. Um, and to think about it, you know, every time we need to look at an array and figure out which element occurs how many times, we have to think of a hash map. And in JavaScript, we can represent that using an object. So the element here, 1, occurs 3 times. Element 2 occurs twice. The element 3 occurs once. This is our lookup table. We need to have this. Um, and for example, if we had... Um, another example where 4 occurs twice and we wanted to find the top 3 elements, well, 1 occurs 3 times, 2 occurs twice, 3 occurs once, 4 occurs twice. So the top 3 elements would be 1, 2, and 4 in that case. right? So we create our hash table again, just like we did earlier. Now, yeah, this is just to reiterate how many times did an element occur think of a hash map. Okay, so going into the example, this is the example that was listed earlier with our array and our k equals 2. We create our hash map um, and there's one way where we could do it is where we could just sort this. So turn this hash map into an array again and we sort it by the value, right? So 3, 2, 1, it's in a descending order. All we have to do is take the keys of the first two elements 1 and 2, and that would give us our solution. However, that is an n of log n method because we need to sort everything here. And there is a faster way. And that is using bucket sort. So just to help you visualize it, I've drawn a chart here. And the occurrence is what we're going to be using. So this is usually the index, right, of an array. So think of this as one array with our index that represents the occurrence the, the number of times that an element appears. And we're going to be mapping that to a list. And you'll see as we go along. So this is what it would look like. This is the structure that you're creating, an array of arrays. Now, for example, um, let's take a look here. One occurs three times. So we would put one in index three because we're mapping the indices to the occurrences, right? So the value 1 occurs 3 times, so we're going to push that here. Next, the value 2 occurs twice, so we're going to push that here in the index 2. And so on, the value 3 occurs only one time, so we're going to access that element, um, that position, and push 3 in there. Now, what if we had 4, right? If 4 only occurred once, then it would probably go in this bucket, the one time, right? And if 4 occurred 3 times, actually, what would happen is that this would actually not be here, but 4 would actually be in this bucket, 1 and 4, and instead of 1 and 2 being the solution, right? So <clears throat> say, for example, if our target was our top 3 elements, right, then 1, 4, and 2 would be the top elements that have occurred, because 1 has occurred 3 times, Let's ignore this 4. 1 occurs 3 times, 2 occurs twice, and 4 occurs... Oh, I'm sorry, let's not look at that, but 1 here occurs 3 times. Okay, so it's 1, 4, and 2. That would be the solution if k was 3, because we're looking for the top 3 occurring values. So um, let me know if that was clear or not in the comments. I will jump into the code right now. Um, actually, let me know if you guys prefer the code walkthrough with the code already here or um, as I live code it and explain it. So let's dive right in. 
Um, remember we had to create our lookup table, right? And the lookup table right here, it just looks like it's just an object with the element of nums and the number of times it has occurred or number of time it appears in this array. So what it looks like, right, one occurs three times. So it would look like, okay, one occurs three times. Um, if we look to the left, two occurs twice and three occurs one time. This is the lookup table that we are trying to create. Um, so that's what line five does, is that it instantiates this scene object. And then we're iterating through our nums array. So let num of nums basically iterates through the elements. And line eight is saying that, okay, if we've seen this, if we haven't seen this value, if this value is undefined, let's log it as one. Okay, we've seen it once, Let's put that in there. Otherwise, if, we've, if we see it already, if we've logged it once already, let's increment that value. So what you would get then is this, this object that you have, right? And next we want to create our bucket. And our bucket would essentially, it looks like this. It's an array of arrays where the indices represent the number of times an element has occurred. So if we were to populate our example right here, it would look like this. So one occurs three times, two occurs twice, and three occurs once. It's the index value that represents the number of time something occurs. And we're actually bounded to the length of nums right here. So I'll give you an example. If our nums example was all unique values, right? Then our bucket would actually look like this that occurs. That's index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Does anything occur two times? No. Does anything occur three times? No. Four times? No. Five times? No. But it has to be the length of this nums. And the reason why is that, for example, what if our nums looked like this? Right? Five occurs one, two, three, four, five times. In that case, our bucket would look like this. So occurs once, no. Occurs twice, three times, four times, five times, yes. That is what our bucket would look like if there were repeated numbers in there. So that's why we are bounded to the length of nums. So <clears throat> I instantiate my bucket here and we are saying, okay, so for every element in the nums, let's push the bucket push the, the array in there so we can actually have our, our, our separated buckets in here. And this creates our bucket. And this next step here, it populates the bucket, right? So for every key in scene, and remember key is our element, and the value corresponding to that is the number of times it's occurred. So let's say, okay, we're renaming this to count. Okay, we're just saying, okay, that's the count. So the bucket accessing the index count, push the element into that bucket, push the key in there. So that populates the bucket. Now let's get rid of this so you can see the full code. Finally, our results. So we are going to be iterating through the buckets from the very right end. So from the last element. And because that's actually the one that occurs the most. And we're saying, okay, well, if that bucket, if that, the occurrence, if it was, um, if it's an empty array, right, which means that value, in fact, didn't occur six times, then we would skip through this iteration, we just continue. Otherwise, we are going to be spreading our result with that um, bucket value, okay? If we didn't do the spread, what you end up getting is another nested um, result. It would just be nested, like it would just be, okay, one occurs three times, two times, um, that, right? What the spreading does is that it would flatten the structure. And notice how it's one, two, and three, where the beginning of the array our results array is going to be the value that occurs the most, okay? 
and then we slice it. And what slice does is that it just chops off the front of the array and it gives us um, up till where k is listed. So for an array with one, two, three, what we'll get is one and two. So slice just returns one and two. And that would be the um, end of the result, the solution. So let me pause right here so you can take a look at the code. And let's submit that. There we go, 70%, not bad. All right, well, let me know in the comments how you found the read through of the code versus a live coding. Thank you.